Welcome to another episode of Arizona Long Tails. This is our Duramax 208 series videos that we're doing a charge coil update or upgrade would be the better term. We're going to go to a 10 amp system. We're going to replace the stock coil that comes from the factory with uh, this twin coil that actually does uh, has two wires coming out. It's actually going to give us four times as much voltage out. Uh, well, not necessarily voltage, but uh, pulses of voltage that this full wave rectifier, uh, it's also a voltage regulator for 14 volts DC, is going to be uh, charging our battery. We've got the DC output going here. You've got a resettable fuse we'll be putting in line. And then I got my amp meter. We can check amp output voltages. And then I'll be running through how, what wires we're going to be tying into and what we're going to be removing. It's going to be a good setup. But let's get to the coil charge system. So the first test we wanted to do was run the system stock. Got a U1 style battery. It's good charge, 12.4 volts. I got my amp meter running. I have it on the adapter because the clamp system has been giving me issues. But right now we're at 0 0.0 amps um, it's a millivolt reader so um, whatever you know if it reads one that's going to be one amp 10 that would be 10 amps of dc current going back into the battery got the speed set at 3600 rpm so it'd be under full load or full rpm uh, for the average components uh, we'll see that in the tachometer let's get it started and see what values we get we'll check what amperage it's putting out and then we'll also see what voltage it goes up to. Okay, so on the stock system, we were getting 0 0.7 amps, so barely one amp of charging current going to the battery. The battery voltage was around 12, 12.5. I think I did a run before I did the video, and I got 12.5, but the amps was still on the low side. The benefit of, of doing this cold charge system is if you have it on a mini bike and you want to run auxiliary components like lights, but you just want to keep the pull start without a battery, the coiled system has enough amperage to maintain those components. Less than one amp for light, you're gonna have flickering, it's not gonna, they're gonna look dim. It's not enough current to run it. So we'll start this assembly and then we'll do our final run test. <laughs> So these are the stock components we're dealing with. Stock coil, it's only one wire coming out and you can see the strand of the wire is very, very tiny. So it just shows how, you know, the coils around is probably small too. This wire is actually going to chassis ground and one wire is going to be going to the output diode, which we'll show out uh, later when we look at the control box. The new coils we're putting in they're isolated from chassis ground so when the magnet goes through through the cycle goes through positive negative it gives us a charge um, on one end and at the other positive and negative the or um, you know at the cycle 
this one's actually going to ground. It's not going to their diode to go through the battery. With this one, because it has uh, the full coil isolated from chassis, when it goes positive and negative, you get the full up of the uh, sine wave and then the, the negative side of the sine wave. So, and then you're gonna have two, so as the magnets are going up and down, rather than just getting one, one you know, spark, per se, you know, if we wanna relate it to the ignition coil, just one spark, you're getting one, two, three, four. So you're gonna be getting four voltage spikes going to the voltage regulator. That's gonna rectify it, give you DC output, and it's gonna regulate current as well. So the ideal swap is gonna be removing these, putting these two and going from there. I do believe uh, to get even more amperage, there's a different flywheel, not supplied by Duramax, but from a stock Honda, it would likely have another two magnets right here. So you're gonna even multiply your spark by another two. So you'll get eight sparks or, or pulses um, going to the voltage regulator that's going to give you even more amperage and from there you know this this wiring is a lot thicker you could tell from what is supplied here so we'll likely be going from the one amp ideally getting closer to the 10 amp range so this is the wiring so the brown wires are going to be the charge coil so we could disconnect this one this item we won't be using I know some setups sell you a second one to put on, but you'll be doubling what you have, but the ideal setup or the best benefit is actually going to the full bridge rectifier, which is this one. This is the one that does most of the work. That second coil might give you another half amp of output. It's very minimal if you're gonna be doing this, this, work, this much work. It'd be worthwhile to, to go to a the isolated charge coil system and uh, the voltage regulator. Start with the uh, reinstallation of, of these components. The kit does come with new hardware, so you'll have all four bolts, which is good because if it didn't come with them, you'd, you'd be short two bolts to uh, complete the, the, the setup. So this, it's black and red, but it's actually AC voltage coming out. So it's actually, there's no polarity. It should be yellow for both wires. So, uh, we could actually cut these because uh, we're going to be putting spade connectors on it when it mates up to the voltage regulator. So you want the curvature to be on the outside. So the flywheel goes around it. Uh, these do have a lip on them. These sit, you know, they, they self-align there. So that goes on the inside. You don't want to put them backwards. And then the wiring, you do want it coming out this way. So, you know, so these two would come out this way. So from here, well, we'll reinstall this, this holder and we'll be coming right on the back side of the starter here. Flywheel, got the key. Pops right into place. Spin it, make sure there's no metal to metal contact. Giving it a spin, no contact, good so far. Looks good and tight. Now it's uh, reassembly. This is where the magic happens. So you get this voltage regulator, 
We do not need the quick connector it has. We're just going to put spade connectors from these two wires. These are two coil wires coming in from the new pack we installed. Rounds out through chassis. And then we're going to do, uh, this goes to your positive uh, terminal. But rather than going direct, we do like to put a fuse in line. So I'll also be putting a spade connector. The downside to mounting this is that I didn't find a good spare bolt that, you know, would mate, that wouldn't look too funky. It's sticking out. The best one I found was actually a crankcase bolt, which I don't like using. This this bolt itself is too, just a little too thick, but it's enough for the threads that can work as a tap. So once I kind of got it going with my 10 millimeter wrench, I was able to use it almost as a tap to make itself a groove because it doesn't require much from the size fitting this is. And this is aluminum, so it's pretty pretty soft to work on. And I use this top one because it gets the voltage regulator a little bit higher off the ground. We're gonna use this on a long tail boat. So it's gonna have a PTO coupler here and uh, should have plenty of room to, to clear that. So you wanna put it at this angle, clear, uh, so it can clear this stator nub right there. Get it good and tight. And from here, we just have to start doing some wiring connections. So you'll need in total four females. Two males, the nine electric connector that would fit the positive terminal. Now we could get into the control box. The circuit breaker, on and off ignition switch. Um, brown wire was the old AC input to the box. We got their battery. You know, be sure you disconnect these when you're working on the motor. So let's open it up. So let's look at color-coded wires. You got the brown that we won't be using anymore. We disconnected that coil that's going straight to the rect voltage rectifier. We could get rid of this. So this wire, well, typically I just cut off the head. Then we pull it through so we're not guessing which wire it is. So this wire comes up through here, goes to your ignition switch. You could maybe see it right there it goes to this um, brown and red lead this brown and red lead also goes through this circuit breaker and then the brown and red lead goes through the sheath and it actually goes to here to the battery so this one we still need to keep because this supplies 12 volts through the circuit breaker which is only a six amp breaker and then to the ignition switch. So what it supplies is 12 volts to the starter solenoid when you flip the key switch. So you still need that. But this wire right here, we don't need. So we could cut that component off clearly. So what's behind this heat shrink tubing? Well, we could check it out. So the AC voltage that would have come from the old coil would go through this wire and it would go through a diode to give you DC output. So this diode is rectifies that, that single charge coil. So this little diode, one diode, is what's going to be giving you that 0.7 amps of charge uh, output to your battery. This has, in theory, four diodes inside. So because you're getting a full wave rectification, it's going to rectify the positive and the negative wave to DC. And then it also has a voltage regulator that's going to be sure that it doesn't give you, you know, 20 volts DC to your battery. So this right here is going to be what we're upgrading from. So that wire 
snipped. We don't need, need it there. Um, what else do we got? We got the blue wire. The blue wire is just a ground. So you got a ground going to this casing and then you got a ground going to chassis ground. So when you kill the switch, it's gonna ground out your, your spark. This black wire does tap into a Y and that Y goes um, goes two ways. One goes to your ignition co um, coil, the other one goes to all, all your pressure switch just to clean up our system. So everything else we wanna keep, we wanna keep the blue, which is a physical ground to chassis. We wanna keep this circuit breaker because this actually protects your crank circuit when you're cranking um, for your starter solenoid. And um, you got your grounding wires. So everything else from here could stay factory. None of this, because it already has its, its own fuse, is going through here. So let's reassemble this and get it installed and we'll, next up is the run test. We'll verify that we're still at the 3700 RPM range. Uh, we'll read from here the, the amp meter, see what amperage it's putting out, and we could go from there. So mathematically wise, it is four times as much charge output that it's gonna produce. I do think it's missing the two additional magnets to, to actually amplify that, still double that. Uh, these coils seem to be working on the 208 systems, the 420 systems, those coils also fitted as well. So those are very generic. Uh, I was actually surprised on the output voltage that we're getting over 13 volts. That's, that's a good indication that the charge circuit is actually wanting to charge. And if you do have external components running off that pos positive battery stud, and you do have a mini bike, now you can put all these auxiliary components and you got four amps powering that. So LED lights, uh, you know, any other, you know, phone chargers, it, it'll actually pick it up pretty well compared to what the stock system is. So that's, that's a video, did one before, but did, didn't have all my nice tools to actually show it going from what stock was to what the aftermarket upgrade was. So it did get four times as much, 0.7 amps up to, and then now we got 2.1, which is seven amp, you know, oh, 0.7 amps to 2.1 or 21 uh, in a sense in that ratio. So it's it's definitely in that, in that four to one ratio that it's an improvement. And yeah, it all has to do with that ignition going you know each one doubling the spark is getting since it's not grounding the chassis and then having that separate coil so yeah hope hopefully this helps out this motor is ready to go out on a as a replacement for a predator out in the water and hopefully see more more blue duramax running the the river peace out guys